on this Advent morning to you and welcome to worship at First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Columbus, Ohio, for the service of morning prayer and communion. Each week we gather for prayer, song, scripture, and communion to celebrate God's presence among us. Later in the service, we, as we do every Sunday, we will celebrate communion. So I invite you to gather the elements that you have that are common to your home so that you can be, they can be used for this purpose later in the service. I'm the Reverend Emily Krause Corzine, Associate Minister. I'm joined today by Senior Minister, Reverend Dr. Tim Ahrens, music, Minister of Music, Kevin Jones, and Director of Christian Education, Mark Williams. We're glad you have joined us here at First Church. You can find the worship materials um, on our website, www.first-church.org. We are a growing and vibrant faith community rooted in social gospel and witness to justice in our city. So if you're looking to uh, working for issues of justice, to serve those in need or grow in your faith, we welcome you and invite you to get involved. Please contact us uh, and let us know um, how you might be able to participate in the life and ministry and mission of this place. A new member class will be starting tomorrow evening. Contact me if you are interested. Now, let us turn our hearts toward the sacred. Let us worship God. Let us join together in the opening sentences. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all of us shall see it together. John the Baptist called people to repentance, to prepare them for the coming of God's reign. Let us, too, repent, that we may be ready for God who comes to us. Let us join together. God, we confess that it is not easy to wait for you. Our world worships the power that acts quickly through force. How difficult it is for us to wait for the power of your rule, which comes slowly through love. We admit that while claiming to desire your reign of peace and justice, we take part in the ways of war, hatred, and injustice. We leave little room for you to act in our lives. We turn now to you in repentance and openness to your spirit. Forgive us and show us how to clear a path for you. Come to us in your Christ and reveal your reign on earth. Amen. God says, Remember these things, O Israel, for you are my servant. You will not be forgiven or forgotten by me. I have swept away your transgressions like a cloud and your sins like mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. I say to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand as you are able. O oh God, open our lips and our, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God. As, As it was in the beginning, is now, and it will be forever. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. 
in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life, that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. People of God, we reconcile ourselves to each other and to God by sharing the peace of Christ. The peace of God be always with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace. Peace. Happy New Year! No, I'm not early. It is the New Year of the church calendar. Yeah. Remember last week, Reverend Aarons was talking about the reign of Christ and that was the last Sunday of the church year? This is the first Sunday of the new year. So we're glad that you're with us this morning. So <clears throat> when you get ready to go somewhere, you kind of have to prepare, right? Now we're not really going much where, anywhere, are we? But like, let's say if you're going to get out of your bed, you probably have to put your, your uh, house shoes on or your slippers, right? Or your robe. So you're preparing before you go out the door, right? Well, and I'm sure that you have had to prepare for other things. Like right now, a lot of the children are preparing to do and to practice the Christmas play that's coming up soon. So they're practicing and preparing. Do you think that this all just stays here all the time? No, we have to put this out. We have to prepare for worship. We have to prepare for the Advent wreath. So we have to prepare for things, right? Well, this is the season of preparing. Preparing, waiting for the coming of Christ. So we're going to help you with that. So a lot of us are going to be home, right? <clears throat> so what we have for you, and you can get that today, is we're going to have a drive-by, and we have a, a big bag full of all kinds of things to help you prepare during the season of Advent. We have an Advent wreath. We have an Advent calendar. We have coloring posters. We have devotions. We have all kinds of things in there for you. We get one for each family. So I hope that you will come by at between 1 and 2, uh, well, 2.30, yeah. Come to the West Lot, and we will help you prepare for the coming of Christ. This is the time that we prepare. So hope to see you this afternoon. Let us pray. Precious and loving God, help us prepare. Help us to keep our eyes open. Help us to keep watch. Help us to see you in everything that we do. In your son's precious name, amen. See you next week and hopefully this afternoon. Proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. Holy One, we light this candle, a candle of grief. In the midst of the stories of the last year, let it burn through these weeks as a beacon to become the light of hope. Let it guide us for your presence in our midst, leading us to your justice and joy in the service of hope. God, God be with, with us, us in this light of hope. Let us pray. Mighty God, creator of the world, break through all that keeps us from you. 
By your great mercy, reform us in your image. Visit us this Advent with your justice, love, and peace, and inspire hope and action for God's promised day. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 64. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for God. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our God. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 13. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. 
As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the sun, but only God. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, the commands and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Guide us in these Advent days, O God, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, illumine these words so we may hear what you have for us this day. Amen. Today we begin anew. We begin anew. With a clean slate and a breath of fresh air, we turn our liturgical calendars and change the colors in the parish hall and set up the Advent wreath and light the first candle and prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ. Just like 2020 has been a decade of disappointment, many of you are thinking Christmas will be the same. Nothing in this season of our lives will be the same. And you're right, it's 2020. There really wasn't much of a choice when it came to a sermon series theme for Advent, Home for Christmas. I'll be honest with you, Tim and I have a difference of opinion about the world's greatest Christmas song. Even the crooners of Bing Crosby or Michael Bublé singing it in my ear, I'll be home for Christmas, could be my least favorite Christmas song, right in front of Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. I mean, I don't know about you, but where else are you going to be for Christmas? I mean, it's 2020. There's a countywide stay-at-home order because of the pandemic. This year, you don't have a choice but to be home for Christmas. The theme couldn't be more perfect. In 2020, if you started sentences with, we were hoping to, or I was planning on, at any point in early 2020, you were soon shaken out of your cheery mood. Now that you had a chance to live into 2020, and as we peer into another year, and I'll put air quotes around this, filled with promise, what stories will you take with you? When you tell your own tales of 2020, what will you share? All the wonderful plans that were canceled? The relatives you told not to come, but who came anyway? 
the bandwidth fizzing out on your most important meetings? Or, my favorite, the word wonky becoming part of your daily vocabulary? Here's another. Maybe you'll share the pictures of what was deemed the most perfect Christmas tree in Ohio, being set up in Fountain Square in Cincinnati. But take a second look. The 65-foot Norwegian spruce, like a few of us, is misshapen and a bit bedraggled. One spectator thought, I honestly didn't know a tree could look like that. Another thought Cincinnati's Christmas tree represents us all. It's doing the best it can. It's a late bloomer. And when all it's spruced up, pun intended, it's just a little off. Perhaps this year's best tree is the model of a pandemic perseverance. Maybe this wonky tree is doing the best it can, just like us. You could also look to the maligned Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center in New York City. It was perhaps judged too soon. Some commentators on social media pounced when they perceived the huge Norwegian spruce looks a little unusually scraggly and to see it as emblematic for the year. If it was a beautiful tree, one person said, well, that would be surprising. This was Emily Bandwin, a podcaster, describing her immediate reaction to seeing the image of the tree. She continued, 2020 is a trash can. It's like, of course we can't have nice things. But the long two day haul from upstate New York to New York City took its toll on the tree, like it would many of us. And even the little owl who tucked himself inside the tree for an unintended across the state trip didn't find the 2020 journey amusing. Just like the rest of us, it's been through some things. In the past, when I preach on the first Sunday of Advent, I would think the texts in the lectionary were a bit out there. It's hard to put into present day words the apocalyptic events portrayed with these texts. This text seems out of place, out of sorts with our world. They seem otherworldly. Sure, they might be right for 2000 years ago and the craziness of that time, but it's 2020. And I think we might even actually understand a little bit more about these texts this year. So maybe they depict a little bit more of our lives than before. The sun will be darkened, the moon not given its light, things falling from heaven, an uncontrollable pandemic, economic unpredictability, travel and stay at home advisories, the power of the heavens shaken, the earth is in a radical awakening here in the text, like none other the world has seen before. And it takes all of it to put the world in a new direction. It is surely God at work here, coming to turn the world aright, to bring down the corrupt, to let the oppressed go free. This year, maybe we have the unique perspective to not be afraid when we hear these texts on the first Sunday of Advent. Maybe they hit us a little too close this year, or maybe they provide a framework for looking at the season of expectation and of hope. The text is providing words for us to live by this Advent season. Stay awake, pay attention, be mindful. Most years, we have high expectations for this season, don't we? family gatherings, the perfect tree, the perfect gift, the perfect middle school performance. But many times those high expectations are met with disappointment. Let's face it, we are fooling ourselves if 2020 is going to be the perfect Christmas. How does that song go? If only in my dreams. The perfect Christmas is only gonna fall somewhere between good and cataclysmic. So for us, maybe home for Christmas and the season of Advent 2020 
can be disappointment proof. Maybe as we find ourselves settling in for home at Christmas, we'll be able to see the things that we held onto so closely, that stressed us out, that caused us undue angst or worry. Maybe this year, we won't go overboard with the decorations or the presents or the Christmas cookies or, you know, the gentleman's inflatable lawn ornaments at the house that I pass on my way home. We'll need to let those things go and not hold such high expectations. May a simplified plan for home at Christmas mean that we'll have more time for each other, more time for Jesus, more time for God. Perhaps when we're most attentive to what is going on in our lives and not distracted by the, from the busyness of this season, we can relax and tell an old story in a new way about the journey to the manger and the birth of our Savior. Maybe we'll look around at all that is, all that is around us, and say all of it is sufficient. That will do. All that we bring, our wrapped up, overstressed, pandemic disheveled selves are sufficient for the savior of the world and God who sent him. It's sufficient for our lives to be focused on the things this Advent that bring us closer to one another and closer to God. Like the tall Norwegian spruce trees, their branches were a bit wonky after their rough and tumble journey. Once their branches relaxed and opened, they were both sufficient for those famous Christmas trees of 2020. And that will do. All that we have now and all that we are is sufficient. It's enough. It will be good enough for the one who is entering the world to make all things new. So may you enter this season deeply and keep awake, stay alert to the most sufficient ways we can be in this time and in this place together. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of all wisdom, our hearts yearn for the warmth of your love and our minds search for the light of your word. Increase our longing for Christ our Savior and strengthen us to grow in love that at the dawn of his coming we may rejoice in his presence and welcome the light of his truth. This day we offer prayers on behalf of this church, the community, and the world. As we come together today, we are in the aftermath of Thanksgiving and apparently we have arrived at this new season ready and open to the coming of Christ. As we step into this day, Lord, we ask that you move us to this new space, this new time, this Advent waiting, this preparation, this holy time of discovering what is yet to come. Invite us in that we may fully understand the presence of your spirit in our lives. Invite us in that we might um, be together in knowing that the days are coming when the Christ will arrive in our midst we ask that you invite us in so that we may be open to the power of your presence in our lives and bring us home, Lord. Bring us home to you and in this time of preparation for the Christ coming into our hearts and into our homes, may you help us to be still, to be aware, to be prepared. We pray this as we lift up the names that are on our hearts and in our minds today, those that we're close to and concerned about. We pause now, and no matter where we are, may we say their names aloud or quietly 
and offer them to you for healing and hope. For all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, we lift them to you, Lord. Hear us now as we pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God of grace, ever faithful to your promises, the earth rejoices in hope of our Savior's coming and looks forward with longing to his return at the end of time. Prepare our hearts to receive Christ when he comes. Amen. First Church, we take an offering for a mission or ministry that supports issues of justice and mercy. Today, member Matt Stevens has provided a video for Church World Service and the blankets and hygiene kit programs. So enjoy this video and may it inspire us to give generously. Thank you. dinner at the Bell started about 20 years ago. It's a, a feed for those that are homeless and economically challenged. And we serve anywhere from 125 to 250 people. It depends from November to February and sometimes even into March. The weather here is not conducive to sleeping outside or even in their car or in a a motorhome or something, they need more warmth. And so the blankets have really been a, a godsend to so many people. It's been so neat to hear that the blankets and kits and things that we support with our Blanket Sunday Drive, uh, in addition to going all over the world and around the country uh, has come back and been a part of some of the ministries like that that we've supported right here. You can see the work that Church World Service does and say, that's the kind of help we want to make, so let's support that. The fourth week of the month, we have toiletries that we give out, toiletries for dignity. The hygiene kits offer us things that we, we don't normally give out with the toiletries the washcloths, the, the nail clippers, etc. Sometimes we have those, but it's rare. It's nice that it's a complete packet. Uh, it really does supplement what we do. And I'm very appreciative of the people who donate their time to fill those hygiene kits. Um, if you knew the value that they were to some of our people, you would know how much they're appreciated and the time that is put in on them to do that is very valuable and it's truly a gift from God. To all of the donors, I, I appreciate, I thank you and keep doing it. Thank you. But there's nothing more to say than thank you.
Welcome to God's table of grace. As we enter into this Advent season, we come to the table with a theme that is surrounding us as we celebrate Christmas at home. This is Advent at home, and know, we know that you have the elements to celebrate the presence of Christ in your home on this day. As we come to the table, we come not because we must, but because we may. We come not because we have all of the answers to the questions of faith, but in our questions, we know that God will meet us here, receive us here, and accept us. We come just as we are. Not one of us has figured everything out, but each of us is beloved in the eyes of God and welcomed with open arms and the fullness of love. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious and ever-living, ever-loving God, we do thank you for gathering us at this, your table of grace. As we step into this season of Advent, may the body and the blood of Christ become for us the real presence of your love in our life. Help us to embrace this presence as we celebrate at home, but get connected to one another across these miles and across this time. We pray uh, your love abide with us here at this, your table, now and always, in Christ's name. Amen. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread, and after he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and he poured it out and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the new and the everlasting covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Gracious God, send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and upon each of us. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ broken for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Please join me in the post-communion prayer. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have brought us from darkness to light, from slavery to freedom, from death to rebirth. Transform our lives with this heavenly food that we may shine with your love and take to the world the risen life of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Preparing to depart, we as a faith community have heard the word and are called to respond and serve. There are many ways to serve our neighbors in this faith community during this time of pandemic. Watch your email, church website, and Facebook for updates concerning our faith community and how we will organize to help those in need during this time. Just a reminder, all worship will be online until further notice no in-person worship. Please note all the virtual studies and meetings being offered this week. Faith Formation continues each week online with exciting uh, opportunities for learning and growing in our faith 
a video for our pre-K through fifth grade, uh, youth connections on Sunday evenings, and formative discussions for adults throughout the week. Please see the details for the Advent study that will be led by Reverend Na Dr. Nancy Livingston. Also, don't forget this afternoon as we will host the Advent drive-by from 1 to 2.30 p.m. in the West parking lot. You will be greeted by the staff and volunteers will hand out one per family Advent in a bag resources. Please enter the Cleveland Street entrance to the West slot. Please re be reminded that you are to stay in your car and be masked. More information is in the Depart to Serve and in Connections. Please note all the upcoming Advent services and programs that will be online during this season. If you need to be in touch with Reverend Aarons or Reverend Corzine for emergency pastoral care or name a prayer request, please call 614-733-4547. This number is listed in the Depart to Serve leaflet. Just a reminder that your giving can be done through PayPal, Easy Tithe, or simply writing a check and sending it in the mail. No matter how you are giving, be sure to mark it for the mission of the week or to the regular church budget. If you have not done so, please like us on the First Church Facebook page. There will be numerous postings through this time for engagement, activities, and devotion. Again, please monitor your email, the church website, and Facebook page. We invite you to the virtual coffee hour after the service today. You may find the link in the Depart to Serve leaflet. Just click on the link and it will take you to the coffee hour. Let us sing the closing hymn as we depart with a heart to serve. Thank Thanks be to God. God. People of God, enter deeply into this season of Advent. Let go of the things you are holding on to so closely. Let go so that you may embrace all that God has for us this season of Advent, trusting that God's grace and love is sufficient. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.